everybody, it's Sandra. How are you doing? I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. I just wanted to take a minute or two to just say thank you so much to everybody who comes to watch my videos. I really, really do appreciate you so much, really, from my heart to yours. I truly, truly do. So I just wanted you to know that. My thing, I guess you would say, is I really, really buy things at a low price. But at the same time, I'm not bashful about plopping down a money if I really think it's worth it. So I don't know. I spent a bunch yesterday. I hope I'm going to be able to get my money back. But if I don't, ah, to heck with it. Why not? Woman of a certain age, I think I'm entitled. I'm entitled to blow a little bit of money if I feel like it. Anyone else relate to that? Yeah, I did it. I did it. I spent a bunch of money. Check out what I got. I hope you like it. As always, let me know what your favorite piece is. I love reading that. Well, look, my problem in life is I love all of them. That's really what the thing is. Even if they're super cheap, I still love them. Did, is that my Rosie? Rosie, come over here, girl. You want to say hi? Come here, girl. Oh, I love this dog so much. We have three chihuahuas. I love them all just the same. They're all special in their own way. Aren't you want to get down? Okay. Rosie and I would like to thank you so much for coming to our video today. <laughs> She's going to go lay down with Pickles and Abigail. Check out what I got. Let me know what you think. And really, honestly, thank you so much for coming. P.S. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging or anything, but some of you may remember this kind of a gorgeous situation right here. This is an Alfred Philippe Invisibly Set brooch for Trafari. And I put this on my eBay page and I sold it for $1,000 within 15 minutes. So I think I underpriced it by a little bit, but I paid, let's see, I bought 24 things. No, I bought 17 things for $24. So I can't do the math, but I guess it was less than $2. That's not something you're going to find every day, but these pieces certainly are out there in the wild. They are there waiting for all of us to go out and get them. All right, let's get started. I bought two different bags full of stuff at two different tables at a community yard sale. So the first bag I paid $55 for, but I think I got some nice things. I got some old things. There's a couple of things I wouldn't have bought if I had more time to closely examine, but you know how it goes. Like there's a lot of people there and people are trying to grab things away from you. <laughs> so uh, he gave me a bag and I kind of was just like throwing stuff in the bag. And then I just said, give me a price. And he said 55 bucks and I said, fine. And that was that. So let's take a look at everything I got from him first. This is adorable. Now you may notice it's new. There's the Crown Trafari hang tag right there. There's the mark. Crown Trafari with a copyright symbol that dates this one from I think the mid 50s to the late 60s. Somewhere right in there. So this is kind of a cool item to have. The fact that it's new, I thought that was pretty cool, right? He actually had a lot of old stuff. And the best thing is we um, exchange phone numbers. So I'm going to keep in touch with him because he says he has a lot more jewelry. So I picked this one out and this has a nice little surprise because it is marked 14K inside the band. I did test it and it does test positive for 14 carat. And then that blue stone is a blue spinel. So I checked that out on my gem tester. So that's a sweet little thing. That's a bonus. I had no idea that was gold. Then I quickly grabbed this. I kind of didn't see how bad the this enamel is, but I thought that was pretty interesting. I really love that red plastic. I kind of liked it. Not in great shape. That one was probably a mistake, but that's okay. I picked this out. I think this is really very, very nicely made. It's clearly signed Monet up here. And it is a great looking charm or pendant, as you can see. Isn't that nice? It really does look like gold. You see there's no tarnish or wear to any of the gold. Monet is such a great company. And I got this. This one is clearly uh, forks or spoons or something. And somebody just put it together right there and put a malachite situation on there. But I think this is really a very darling bracelet. Do you like that? I really do. I think this is really pretty. Here's a lovely bit of costume jewelry. This style of necklace is called a festoon. And these are wedding cake beads. 
this is just lovely. Now, this was a popular style in Georgian times, Victorian times, Edwardian too, but this is not. This is a little bit later than that. I would say maybe 1940s or 50s on this. Really pretty, I think. That's a really pretty faux opal too. Let's do this for the full effect. How pretty. Isn't this nice? Oh, I love those wedding cake beads. Definitely has an antique look to it, and I think it's just girly and wonderful. How about this brooch? I love this color combination. I love blue and green together. This one is nice and high. This is a great, likely 1950s brooch. I love this thing. That's a great thing. And look, there's no missing stones. This piece was the best. And when I got home, don't, it's missing a stone, which I didn't notice, which is so aggravating. I can't believe I did that. Oh, well, it's still really pretty. I mean, you could wear it and it, it wouldn't really be that noticeable, but yeah, I guess it's somewhat noticeable. What a great old piece, trombone clasp. Of course, I'm never, ever in my lifetime ever going to find a stone to fit in there, but all right. A for effort on this one. Just, just didn't notice it. Here's a bracelet that is in the style of Goldette. It's not signed. I don't know if Goldette did unsigned ones or not, but this is pretty beautiful and there's no missing stones. I love the high settings on here. So nice. Here's our, our book chain right there. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I love this one. I love that he had a lot of older pieces and he has a lot more jewelry. This guy said that he cleans out spaces and he said he has boxes and boxes of jewelry. So uh, instead of me leaving my number, which I usually do, you know, and then people never call you back, he gave me his number. So I'm gonna try to follow up with him tomorrow and see if I can go over and buy some more stuff. Look at this sweet little item. How pretty is this? So this is Lucite. I don't know if it's supposed to be kind of yellowing like that or if that just happened with age. That's what the back looks like. So that's a morpho butterfly wing, as I'm sure you can tell. And that is like the, the pattern is in reverse. I love this. I've never seen one like this before. I've only ever seen morpho butterfly wings like b behind glass and carved glass, never plastic like this. So I thought that one was really darling. I love copper jewelry, and this is really a fantastic bracelet. It's so chunky, nice and wide, thick, heavy, the whole deal. Not signed by Renoir, kind of surprisingly, but this kind of rocks. I love this. I guess this one is probably from the 1960s. That's awesome. I threw this in the bag, and it was a mistake because I think it's missing something. What did I? I know something is broken here. Let's see, um, this, okay, there it is, oops. Yeah, this had something break off the tip of it, unfortunately, and maybe this one too, yeah, all right. Well, that was a mistake, but I picked that out, and these are the matching earrings, at least the earrings are good, so there's that, but um, yeah, oopsie. <laughs> kind of still cool, I mean, I don't know, if you wore this, you think it it's really noticeable, I sort of don't think so, but I don't know if I could sell it like this. So, man, that's kind of a drag, but that's okay. I still got other cool stuff. I bought this big boy because, you know, who wouldn't? Isn't he fun? People love figural stuff. They love frogs. I just thought he was adorable. He's not signed or anything like that, but I just grabbed him and put him in my bag because I thought maybe he would sell. You will notice right away that this is a high quality item. Isn't this a great flying horse? Very cool. This one is a Trafari. There is no crown and there is no copyright symbol. So it says Trafari TM. I think this one might be from the 90s. This is a really, really great one. I love it. Do you ever get the feeling someone is looking at you? <laughs> I think this glass eye is just extra, extra good. It's a lot of colors going on in that glass. Isn't this so cool? I would date this one to the 1970s or so. That's what it looks like, you know, give or take. I love this pendant. Look, it even has that little thing. What is that called? There's probably a special name for that 
part of your eye right there. You know, that's not really actually your eyeball. See, these are the things in life I wonder about. <laughs> I need to know what that thing's named. If I can figure it out, I'll put it on the screen so we will all know. That's a very unusual pendant, that's for sure. Here's a pair of very, very beautiful earrings. And these are probably 90s or 2000s. So they are signed Carol Lee. Let's see if we can find where the mark is. There it is, Carol Lee. So that was started, I think her name is Carol Lee Friedlander. And her company started in the early 1970s. And I think they still exist. But you can see somebody bought them in Bloomies for 55 bucks. Let's see what the date is. Is there a date? There must be a date, right? Oh, 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 six. Okay. I think these are really, really stunning. So I got those. I really like that it has its original price thing. Here's a pair of really beautiful earrings. These are marked Barclay on the back. I don't usually see this name brand very much. I would say these are circa 1950s. They were based in, where else? Providence, Rhode Island. I think these are very, very pretty. I love the, the shade of red. Those are nice. And I have some more earrings here. I have some, a pair of Weiss here. This is always a great thing to buy if you see Weiss. There's the signature. These aren't particularly old. We know that, right, because of the Aurora Borealis. So it's at least 55 or later, or some people say 57 or later. These are pretty, milk glass and rhinestones. Beautiful. I really love buying little rings like this. I just love this. So it looks like real gold. It is only gold filled. It is marked C and C. See if we can get that. Hopefully you can kind of see that. 10 karat gold filled, C and C. C and C stands for a company, Clark Coombs. They were around from the 30s to the 50s. I would probably put this one in the 40s. This is actually a very, very sweet little ring. It's in great condition too. So I think that somebody's gonna like to have this. Really a darling little thing. This is a great old ring. So I'm not sure if this was like a gumball machine ring or what the deal is, or just sort of a, a dime store ring, right? Like a Woolworths sort of thing. But um, this one looks like it's maybe from the 40s too and I love it. There is unfortunately a little bit of chipping here, just a little hint of it, not too bad. But I thought that was a very interesting thing because of the plane. What do you make of this ring? Isn't this weird? That stone is totally dull, so I have no idea what kind of stone that could be. And this is clearly uh, like brass or something, but it says 14 karat and a half or something. I don't know what in the world this is. I gotta figure it out. I, I guess that's some sort of a, a gold filled possibly. It certainly isn't gold, that much is guaranteed. But I thought this looked like a nice old thing, nice old heavy man's ring. Here's another crown Trafari brooch. I think this one's really beautiful. I love that. It's in perfect condition, that's for sure. New, I think, I'd have to really examine it, but I think this one is new on card. So that's a wonderful thing. I don't know what to make of these earrings. I just think they're so weird. I love the pink color, and I just think there's something extremely groovy about them. They do like look like they're from the 70s to me, maybe the 80s. What do you think? I really like these. I think these are cool. I think I'm going to just keep these and wear them. They're just really different, I think. And in really nice shape, too. Look at that enameling. Love it. I love white and pink together. What a cool combination, right? I don't know much about Alex and Ani, but when I see it, if it looks like it's interesting, like this was a mermaid, uh, I pick it up because I'm like, oh, maybe that will sell for something. I don't think this one does. I think I have about 20 or 30 Alex and Ani bracelets at this point. I think I'm just going to lot them all up and sell them at some point as soon as I can come up for air. But I thought that was kind of cute. I love mermaid jewelry. I got this guy. I don't think this one is particularly old, but I think he's pretty great. Don't you love him? I do. Not signed. But pretty neat, I thought. Here's a very friendly snowman. Don't you like him? So the first thing you might notice is it's got to be sterling. I don't know how this isn't sterling. I didn't see a mark for it. It is marked Zirkus, however. 
I have heard that name brand before. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just thought this was, was pretty interesting. So I put it in the bag. So this one looks like a nice high quality piece. I grabbed it because I thought maybe it was, you know, gold or something. I don't think so. Upon closer inspection, you know, but that's why I grabbed it. It's sort of the just grab them and put them in a bag, get a price and check them out further when I'm home. This is a nice high quality thing. It does kind of look real, doesn't it? I don't know. Let me just look with my loop for a second. That's what I thought. The gold is scraping away up here. So I don't know, maybe it's just gold plated. Uh, I'll look further into it. I don't know. It's pretty in any event. I bought this big thing. This is great. It almost reminds me of a Weiss pin, but I don't see any marks on it. It is pretty nice though. I really like the condition. It's very large. I could really imagine somebody rocking this one cool item. I love brooches. Do you love brooches? I really do. How about these wackadoos? These must be from the 80s, <laughs> right? Dangling records, huh? Not signed. <laughs> Just as cheap as can be, and I think very kitschy and very, very fun. So I grabbed those. How about these showstoppers? Pretty nice. These stones are all glass. At first, I thought that was sort of a lava rock kind of thing, kind of a look, you know, sometimes when they did that. But this is actually just molded glass, and it is quite lovely. I love the color. I don't really see any flaws with this. It's just beautiful. Now, as luck would have it, you know, this is unsigned, but the earrings aren't. It is signed right there, Bow Jewels. Bow Jewels is actually a quite collectible thing. They ran from the 1940s to the 70s. I would say these are probably late 40s, early 50s. And I just love them. I love the glass right here, how they sort of hit the tops with them with this gold paint. Very cool. That's my kind of brooch right there. Really nice, right? So I would think this would have a little bit of resale value. So all of that for 55. How'd you think I did? I thought it was pretty good, but at another table, I spent $300. So let's check out the next little batch that I got. Really, really pretty stuff coming up. So I got this great bracelet. It is signed uh, Mexico 925 HOB. And I love this. It's a nice, nice, heavy sterling silver bangle. And I love the turquoise. I just love everything about it. This is a very nice piece of jewelry. It is really heavy and really nice. And uh, I have two of them actually. So these I'm just in love with. I don't know if I would sell these or keep them, but I really love them. And I've never seen anything quite like it before. I really, really, really love these bangles. Whoa, look at this thing. This is a beautiful, beautiful bird brooch, Nolan Miller Glamour Collection. I have sold, I think maybe even this exact one in the past. So I figured this would be worth like between uh, 50 and 75. That was just sort of a guess. And I think I'm right on that. And there's no missing stones. That's not a missing stone, is it? It better not be. Hold on. Nope, it isn't. Okay, good. We're good. So how beautiful is that? Oh, I love it. I love the pink branch. Isn't that so kind of creative? Beautiful. So somebody likely got this off of QVC or HSN. Very cool. So this is my kind of ring right here. How much do you love this? This is so sparkly. Truly, it's, it's just insane. This one is marked Olipop. Now, I've never heard of Olipop. But I knew this was a very special ring just because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> it's just great. And um, it's always a bonus when you're in the wild, you know, and you see that stuff is signed. So I thought, well, I'll take a gamble on this because I think it's worth something. And I think it probably is, but I'm probably going to keep it because I fell in love with it. And now we're like having a little sort of love affair, me and the Olipop ring. <laughs> what do you think? Do you love it? So then I pick this thing up and I'm like, um, this is fantastic. Look at this little sort of like cinch 1960s or early 1970s bag. 
that I love. That's metal, as you can see. But I love this opening. So it has these rings. And so, all right, not perfect inside. A little bit of staining here and there. I don't think that's really that big of a deal. And guess what it is? Burr, Whiting and Davis. Isn't that funny when that happens? I mean, I almost never find Whiting and Davis, and now I just found it twice in a row. Pretty weird, but I just love this. I could just see somebody wearing this with like white go-go boots, you know, or something. It's got that kind of thing to me. It's in really nice condition. I didn't see any flaws. Well, other than that sort of the staining inside. And then I saw, yeah, there's a little bit of schmutz right there that I think I can clean up. But this one is stunning. So I thought this one would have good resale value. Cool item. Here's another showstopper. Take a look at this old beauty. Whoa. Now you notice that the glass here, see it's not, it's like, it's, got a thingy like you know it's it's cabochon but it's uh, got an indent or I mean it's just interesting right and it looks like it's got some sort of facets but on the other side where you can't see does that make sense I don't know what that's called if anything I guess it's just sort of really cool like curved glass and then look at these what is going on here it looks like Aurora Borealis coating, but it has all sorts of textures. Let me try to zoom it in. Hold on. Isn't that interesting? What do you think? This whole thing is magnificent. I, I love it. Now, I don't know why it says $90 on it. I mean, that's not what I paid, of course, but uh, somebody, I guess, had this priced as such in their vintage shop or whatever. Yeah, this one's great. I love this. You know, I love brooches. I really, really do. So I'm going to put this with my blue brooch collection. It's so interesting. I really, really love it. It's just very nicely made. You know when you turn a piece over and it's also really nice on the back? This is a good one, I think. Here's a great puffy heart necklace. So the first thing you know, you know, right away, it's obviously reproduction but it is like a tip of the hat to the Victorian puffy hearts, which I love. And likely made from the same molds, who knows, but they uh, they did do that, certain companies did, did that. I know Piddly Links did, which I've sold in the past. So this one is signed by Ann Koplik. I don't know who that is, I've never sold it before, but I love it and I was thinking maybe this would have some value, so that's why I chose this. I actually love the sound it makes. Listen to this. Isn't that pretty? I think it looks pretty and it sounds really pretty too. Now we can see how pretty this is. This is so nice. I love this. Doesn't that look great? I really think it does. It looks like an antique too. This necklace is really beautiful. Look at these sort of Baroque pearls. I don't know if those are real or imitation. They may be real. This is just costume jewelry, you know, the whole thing. It is made to look like rose gold. Now, this is just beautifully detailed, and I have sold this name brand before too, but I don't know how to say it. Yeah, how do you say that? Liz Palacios? Pa Palacios? Boy, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. But I have sold this before. I know this is a nice collectible brand, but I think this necklace is, is stunning. So all these little things have movement. There's different colors. There's just little items of interest that I think are beautiful. So that was one of the things I got too. So this necklace is Piddly Lynx. I love this name brand. It sells very well for me. Now I know for a fact they did use old molds sometimes. I don't know if they did here, but it certainly is possible. It looks, it looks like they may have, right? But how pretty is this necklace? I'll show you the their signature here. Piddly links, there it is. I love that. Look at this great necklace. So this one is signed Mikal Golan. Now she is New York City based and I think she's modern day. I've sold this name brand a couple of times before. I really, really love her work. So she's also giving a tip of the hat here to old fashioned. You can see by the chain and even by this, 
that's a very, very cool eye. I love that in really great condition also. I have this same brooch, but not in this color. And this is really in wonderful condition. So as you can see, it's very concave and it's kind of cool. Love it. And it's in very, very nice condition. Really nice. What do you think? Did I get my money's worth? How am I doing so far? I hope so. Here's a jolly old Santa. I love this guy. This is an awesome pin. Now I did take it apart because I was trying to figure out how it works. I have sold this exact one before, by the way. I only had one other one, but I did sell it. So there's a light bulb right there. His nose lights up. I think you press this thing in the back. I took it apart because I was trying to figure out how it works. And of course I don't know. Um, I don't know, a battery is supposed to go in here. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to my husband take a look at it. I'm not exactly sure. But regardless, I thought this was a really nice old Christmas brooch. So I got this one. I'm not exactly sure what this is. I don't know if this is like a typewriter key that somebody made into this pendant. It's not old. I don't think it's old. I think it's just trying to look old. And I thought this was really pretty though. And it came on this chain. I thought somebody who had a name that started with A might really like this. I really do. Old fashioned. Here are two really lovely things. I love this pendant. This is antique for sure, not in perfect condition. I realize that, but I think it really is beautiful. I love this. I love the movement of these two sort of things. And I believe these are coral beads. They look like it. They feel like it. I did examine them with a loop. I just think these are beautiful. This one's like kind of just a little bit dented up and stuff. But I think completely charming. I wonder what that's supposed to be. Like a lantern, maybe? Some vines up here. I think these are old and lovely. Love those. So I knew right away when I saw this that this was amber. This is beautiful, beautiful amber. Graduated beads, nice and smooth. There are a couple of like tiny, tiny, you know, little marks of wear here and there. Nothing bad. But let's prove that it's amber with our black light flashlight. Real amber will fluoresce in a black light. Now I'm just going to show you this just so that we can compare. These are little orange stones around the side of this brooch, but these are, you know, not amber or anything. They're just regular old plastic. So here's my black light flashlight. This is the one I got on Amazon. I can't remember what I paid for it, $12 or something. So let's turn the lights off. And let's have a look. Let's see what glows. Yeah, those are glowing nicely. So they're glowing like a yellow. And let's take a look here. So that orange plastic isn't doing anything. See the difference? But these are glowing yellow. And how, right? This is a very, very beautiful piece of amber. I think this is cognac amber. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I think it is. I have sold amber before. I have a bunch of it, but I'm not exactly sure, you know, without doing further research. These are um, not really completely opaque. They are somewhat translucent and just completely gorgeous. I love this, so I'm very excited to have this necklace, that's for sure. Wow, this is just beautifully detailed. It's like a lion right there on the breastplate, I guess. And I love the dragon on the helmet. I really don't know what this is. There is a pin on the back. Now, I don't know if that's original to it or not. That would be hard to tell. It kind of looks like it's Victorian era, but not with that pin, it isn't. So that's why I'm just wondering exactly what is going on with this thing. If anybody knows, please tell me. It is certainly possible that this was like part of something else, maybe, and somebody, you know, removed it and just like put that pin on there. I'm just not sure what to make of this. I know that it's fabulous and I love it and I can't wait to wear it actually. Just wondering what it is. It's cool, right? I really think it is. 
I found this sweet little lavalier pendant. It's 14 karat gold. I found this in a little antique place. It was $90 and it does include this necklace. So I thought that that was kind of underpriced and that's why I bought it, you know, plus I love it. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this or sell this uh, or not, but you see there's a little freshwater pearl dangling right there. This is really a, a beautiful item from the 19 zeros, maybe the 1910s, Edwardian right in that area. So legend has it that the Lavalier is so named because of the Duchess Louise de la Valliere, who was the mistress of King Louis XIV. So that's how it got its name. At least that's what they say, because I guess she liked wearing these kinds of things. We'll take a look at the mark. Oops, I think you can see it right there. I spy with my tiny little eye. There it is, okay. So pretty. This is so delicate and so feminine. I actually really, really love these things. This is maybe the second or third one that I've gotten. Love it. I think that was a great price too. Really pretty antique gold piece. That's it for this haul. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. And I hope to see you soon. And don't forget to let me know what your favorite pieces were. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.